Today is the second Sunday of Easter, and we call it the Divine Mercy Sunday. And we gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear friends, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. All together, I confess, I confess to Almighty God, God and to you, my brothers and sisters, sisters that I have greatly sinned in, in my thoughts and in my words, words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, to my fault, to my fault, to my most grievous fault. Therefore, as Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, in you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth is to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We Let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindled the faith of the people you have made your own, increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed, 
that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, and by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. The first community of believers, though poor, is noted for its attitude of sharing. By the power of Jesus' resurrection, the followers of Christ are now of one heart and mind, sensitive to those in need. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The community of believers was of one heart and mind, and no one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they had everything in common. With great power, the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great favor was accorded them all. There was no needy person among them, for those who owned property or houses would sell them, bring the proceeds of the sale, and put them at the feet of the apostles, and they were distributed to each according to need. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love is everlasting. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love is everlasting. Let the house of Israel say, His mercy endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, his mercy endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, His mercy endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love is everlasting. I was hard-pressed and was falling, but the Lord helped me. My strength and my courage is the Lord and he has been my savior, the joyful shout of victory in the tents of the just. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, his love is everlasting. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done, it is wonderful in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love is everlasting. A believer who holds that he or she is loved by God is in inspired to love God in return. To keep God's commandments is a joy and not a burden. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is begotten by God. And everyone who loves the Father loves also the one begotten by Him. In this way we know that we love the children of God. When we love God and obey His commandments, for the love of God is this, that we keep His commandments, and His commandments are not burdensome. For whoever is begotten by God concurs the world, and the victory that concurs the world is our faith. Who indeed is the victor over the world, but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by water alone, but by water and blood. The Spirit is the one that testifies, and the Spirit is true. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Please stand. You believe in me, Thomas, because you have seen me, says the Lord. Blessed are those who have not seen me, but still believe. Hallelujah! 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 The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked, where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side, the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. And Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But Thomas said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. And Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, and see my hands, and bring your hand, and put it into my side. And do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord, and my God. And Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of these disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through his belief, you may have life in his name. My dear friends, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Peace be seated. Sa ating Ibanghelyo, mga kapatid, ang mga naging katuwang ni Jesus sa eksena ay walang iba kundi si Tomas. Na ayon sa tradisyon, ang tawag sa kanya ay the, doubt, the Doubting Thomas, ang disipulong nagdududa. Nagdududa na si Jesus ay nabuhay galing sa kamatayan. Siya ay nagdududa at sinasabi niya, unless makikita ko ang kanyang mga sugat at maipas ko ang aking mga daliri sa kanyang taligir, tagiliran, mandi ako maniniwala, sabi niya. The doubtful or the doubting Thomas. At kung titignan natin sa eksena, Nang dahil sa sugat, natapos ang pagdududa ni Tomas. Kaya nitong umaga, mga kapatid, nais kong bigyan ng halaga sa aking pagbabahagi ang sugat. Ang una, ang sugat ni Tomas. At ang pangalawa, ang sugat ng ating Panginoong Hesus. Una, ang sugat ni Tomas na nasa loob. Hindi nakikita. Wala mang dugo, pero alam natin ang bigat-bigat ang at ang sakit. Sabi nila, hindi naman daw talaga 
nagdududa si Tomas. Marahil siya ay naninigurado lang. Gusto niya lang maging sigurado. Sapagkat nga naman, siya ay nasaktan. Ako naiintindihan ko si Tomas. Kasi ba naman, kitang-kita natin sa kanyang, sa kanyang damdamin na may namumuong sugat sa kanyang puso. May naiiwang sugat sa kanyang kalooban. Kaya naiintindihan ko ang kanyang reaksyon. Sino ba naman kasing ganun na lang kadali kapag alam mong nasasaktan ka? Di ba alam naman natin yun kapag nasasaktan ka, lalong-lalong alam mo, sinaktan ka, hindi ka na basta-basta ang maniwala. Andun na lagi yung, yung, yung pagdududa. Kaya sabi nga nila, si Tomas ay naninigurado lang. Naninigurado. At alam ko, ganun din tayo kapag nasaktan, lalong-lalo na kapag nandyan pa yung bago pala yung sugat, minsan naging maingat na tayo. Naninigurado na hindi hindi na muli tayong masaktan, hindi hindi na muli tayong sasaktan, at hindi hindi na muli tayong maluloko. Kaya normal po naging reaksyon ni Tomas, yung sugat na iyon. Bagkos mga kapatid, ang nais kong iparating dito, nawa hindi tayo maging katulad dito mas na kung saan hinayaan niyang matapos ang pagiging nasaktan sa pagiging negatibo. Well, alam ko naman tayong lahat ngayon sa panahon ng pandemya ay eh, umaasa na maging negative. But what I mean, ang sinasabi ko, yung disposition sa buhay. Huwag tayong pumayag na alam ko kung alam mo na sinaktan ka, nasaktan ka, may sugat dyan sa puso mo, huwag na huwag kang pumayag na tatapusin mo yan sa pagiging negatibo, sa pagiging masungit, sa pagiging laging may galit, sa pagiging siloso, o di kaya sa pagiging nagmumukmuk, o pagiging matampuhin, na huwag kang pumayag. The more that you should tell yourself, I don't deserve that. Kasi sinaktan ako. Kaya kung sakali po, kung sino man dito sa atin ngayon, ang alam natin, ang dami na natin pinagdaanan sa buhay, pinagkaisahan, sinaktan, na alam mo ang sakit-sakit, mga kapatid, sabihin mo sa sarili mo, I don't deserve na magmumukmuk ako. I don't deserve na ang ma- ang mangingibabaw sa puso ko ay galit, tampo, at kung ano-ano pang negatibong disposition. Huwag kang pumayag. Huwag tayong maging katulad ni Tomas. Oo, nauunawaan ko si Tomas, siya ay nasaktan. Nasasaktan siya, galit na galit siya, mahina siya, nalulungkot siya, natatakot siya dahil sa sugat. O huwag nating hayaang matapos sa pagiging negatibo na may duda, hindi na na nagtitiwala, masyado nang sarado. ba diba, may mga taong ganun na tipong dang dahil sa kaya, isa, nag-iisang sugat, hindi mo na makakausap, hindi mo na maisasama, hindi na nagre-reply. Nakakalungkot. No! Kita mo yung mga apostoles, sila'y nagtatago dahil sa sugat. Nasasaktan din sila. May mga sugat ang kanila mga puso. Kita mo sila, nagtatago. Nandun sa loob. Takot na takot. Kaya nung nakita ni Jesus, No, you don't deserve that. Lumabas kayo. Kaya ang alay niya, Peace be with you. Nako, mag-ingat tayo sa mga sugat. Ang sugat ay hindi po habang buhay magiging sugat. Ang sugat ay nandyan, Ibig sabihin nun, hindi ho pang matagalan yan. Darating ang panahon, maghihilom ho yan. E ngayon, sino ba magpapahilom nun? Hindi po ibang tao, kundi ikaw mismo. Sa'yo mismo manggagaling ang pamamaraan kung paano mo hilumin ang mga sugat sa iyong mga kalooban. Maging maingat ho tayo dyan kasi alam nyo, sa psychology, kapag hindi natin titignan o di kaya 
hinahayaan lang natin yung sugat na yan. Nako, habang buhay mo dadalhin yan. Yung tipong, may sinasabi sa psychology, yung it may manifest unconsciously. Yung hindi mo na alam na nagdidik ka pala ng buhay mo, yung sugat, nung bata ka pa. Di ba may mga taong halimbawa, may mga taong hindi nakakatulog sa gabi ng, ng, may, ng may ilaw. Sabi nila, example daw ito, kasi nung kabataan niya, sabihin natin mga 2 years old, 3 years old, 5 years old, or 7 years old, may karanasan siya na tinakot siya ng kanyang mga kapatid. Loko, may mumu dyan. Inandahin sa takot na yun, nasaktan o nasugatan. Kaya nakakalungkot hanggang ngayon, 50 na, 60 na, 40 na, takot pa rin sa mumu. Na in fact, kung titignan mo, nangyari noon yang kabataan pa lang. Ibig sabihin, hindi nahilom. Pinabayaan yung mga sugat. Ay mamay maingat tayo, di ba? May mga taong hanggang ngayon, oo, naintindihan natin nung bata, elementary, takot sa bulate. Pag lulukohin natin, nako, bulate, tak, tak, tumatakbo. Eh nakakatawa na po ko sakaling, nako, lola, 80 na po kayo, 60 na, 50 na, takot pa rin sa bulate. Ibig sabihin, may mga, mga sugat nung bata, nung kabataan natin noon na hindi nahihilom. Maging maingat tayo, baka dadalhin natin sa pagtanda unconsciously. Kaya may mga taong hanggang ngayon masungit pa rin. May mga taong ngayon ayaw magpatawad. May mga taong kahit ang gandang-ganda na ng buhay, ang laki-laki na ng sweldo, napakalaki na ng bahay, masungit pa rin. Kasi hindi po naghilo mo yung mga sugat noon. And we don't deserve that. Ang sinasabi ni Kristo, Oo, nakita ko, nasaktan ka. Nasaktan tayo, may sugat kayo. Bagkos, lumabas kayo at hilumin ang sugat. Dito, nagkakaiba ang sugat ni Jesus. Kung ang sugat ni Tomas nasa loob, hindi nakikita, o kita mo ang daming dugo, kay Jesus baliktad. Ang sugat ni Jesus nasa labas, nakikita, subalit walang dugo. Ang sugat na nagdulot kay Jesus na maging mas mapayapa. Kaya sana yun ang mas titignan natin. Hindi po maging perpekto ang buhay natin. Alam ko, may pagsubok, may pag-aaway, may di pagkakaunawaan, may tampuhan, laging may nasasaktan. Kung mga kapatid, sana huwag, tayong, huwag nating hayaang matapos sa doon. Hayaan natin matapos ito ng paghihilom ng sugat, ng sagayon, ang sugat na iyon ay magdudulot sa atin ng mas maging mapayapa. Napakaganda ng mensahe ni Jesus. Ang sugat sa labas, wala na ang dugo, naghilom na. At ang sugat na yun ay mas naging mapayapa. At hindi lang yun. Kapag mas naghilom na ang sugat na iyon, mas maging malawak ang iyong pagunawa at mas madali pa ang iyong pagpatawad sa kapwa. And in this Sunday, the Divine Mercy, the best gift that God has offered to His disciples when He appeared to them for the third time is the gift of forgiveness. Sa pagkatunay nga naman, mga kapatid, ang tunay na kapayapaan ay makakamit lamang sa pagpapatawad. Sabi nga ng isang batikang Dominikano, sila Cordair, lagi kong sinasabi ito eh. Kung gusto mo maging happy for a while, gumanti ka sa mga taong nagpakasakit sa iyo. 
Pero kung gusto mo maging happy for life, magpatawad ka sa mga taong nagpakasakit sa iyo. Today is the Divine Mercy Sunday. And God has given His disciples the gift of forgiveness. And I hope we also share this forgiveness to other people. Kung meron po dyan may mga mabibigat pa sa damdamin, please, nakikiusap ako. Huwag nyo nang dalhin yan. Paglabas nyo ng simbahan, itapon nyo na yung mga nagpapabigat sa dabdibdib nyo. Isindi nyo po ng kandila, ipagdasal nyo sa ating mahal na ina. Because you don't deserve that. Lalong lalong na kung gaano ka nasaktan, then the more you should tell yourself, I deserve better. Sinong magbibigay nun? Hindi yung ibang tao, kundi ikaw mismo. Napakaganda ng huling eksena sapagkat ang dalawang sugat nagtagpo. Ang sugat ni Tomas na puno pa ng dugo at sakit at ang sugat ni Jesus na naghilom na. At nung pinagtagpo ang dalawang sugat na yun, nawalay ang lahat, mas naging mapayapa, at higit sa lahat, mas naging bukas sa pagpapatawad sa kapwa. Sugat, hindi po mawawala yan. Pero kayang-kaya, ayusin, hilumin, at sana ang sugat na iyan ay magdulot sa atin ng maging mas mapayapa. We all stand and all together we profess our faith. I believe in God. The Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of life everlasting. Amen. Let us turn to the Father, to our Lord Jesus Christ, who plunges us into the infinite ocean of His mercy that is greater than sin, evil, and suffering, and death. In His loving mercy, we have victory, salvation, and eternal life. And for every petition, we shall say, God of mercy, listen to our prayer. God of mercy, listen to our prayer. For the leaders of the Church, that believing in and experiencing the Lord's infinite mercy, they may always proclaim it to God's people. We pray. God of mercy, listen to our prayers. For our local and national leaders, that like the apostles, they may attend to the needs of our communities and work for peace, unity, and progress. We pray. God of mercy, listen to our prayer. For those who, like Thomas, live in doubt and fear, that peace and forgiveness of the risen Christ may strengthen them to face life's challenges and difficulties. We pray. God of mercy, listen to our prayer. For all of us gathered here, that we may be immersed in the ocean of divine mercy and live as ministers of the Lord's peace and reconciliation. We pray. God of mercy, listen to our prayer. For our departed brothers and sisters, May they experience the infinite mercy of God in the heavenly paradise, we pray. God of mercy, listen to our prayer. Let us pray for the urgent concerns of our community and our personal intentions. So we, in silence, we spend a few moments of silence for our personal intentions that we would like to offer for this Mass through the intercession of Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawa.
God our Father, in Jesus, you have shown us your boundless love and infinite mercy. Teach us to love you in return, entrust our lives to your love and mercy, and serve you in our brothers and sisters, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Please stand. Pray, my dear friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people, that renewed by confession by, of your name and by baptism, they may attain an ending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We we'll lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to praise you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world, by dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, he restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Please me. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall. 
so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, then entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Socrates, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Saint Dominic, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say,
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And now, my dear friends, let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace, peace be with you all. Samahan niyo rin po ng pagpapatawad sa ating mga kasama at kapamilya dyan na kasakasama niyo ngayon. Please kneel. My dear friends, behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Please stand. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and our hearts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. My dear friends, let us turn to Mary, help of Christians, for the increase of priestly vocations in the Church in Lingayen Dagupan. We shall answer, grant through your prayers, many vocations to the priesthood. Grant through your prayers many vocations to the priesthood. You accompanied your son on his way to Calvary. Walk with our seminarians in their journey of priestly formation. Mary, help of Christians. Grant through your prayers many vocations to the priesthood. You are the mother of the Good Shepherd. Inspire our youth to follow the voice of your son and courageously answer his call to be shepherds. Mary, help of Christians. Grant all your prayers many vocations to the priesthood. You were with the Apostle in prayer on Pentecost Day. Stay with us in prayer so that the fire of the Spirit may descend on our young men seeking their vocation in life. Mary, help of Christians. Grant all your prayers many vocations to the priesthood. Your son entrusted to you the beloved disciple at the foot of the cross. Take into your immaculate heart our young men who are reluctant to answer the call to be priest. Mary, help of Christians. Grant all your prayers, many vocations to the priesthood. Mary, help of Christians, we place all our young men under your motherly protection. Inspire them to serve the church as priests of your son. Take under your motherly care our seminarians being formed for the priesthood. Accompany with your help your priests as they follow your Son, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the announcement. The Summer Feast of Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag will be on April 21, 2021, third Wednesday of Easter. Novena Masses will begin on April 12 until April 20, 2021. The schedule of Masses will be at 6 a.m., 7.30 a.m., 9 a.m., 10.30 a.m., 12 noon, and 4.30 p.m., and will be streamed live through the social media platforms of the Minor Basilica and via Manawag Dominican Radio 102.7 FM. We cordially invite you to participate in the Feast and the Novena Masses. If you wish to sponsor one or several Masses during this Feast and Novena, you may approach our Basilica personnel in the religious store and Mass intention counters or visit our website www.manawagbasilica.org or FB page https slash facebook.com slash minor basilica manawag official thank you please stand maraming salamat po sa inyong pakikisa sa ating banal minsan nitong divine mercy sunday muli po alam ko lahat tayo may mga sugat tama po ba ako din may sugat ngayon ang tanong paano ba natin dadalhin ito by Thomas' way or by Jesus' way? Tandaan natin, if we do the Jesus' way, mas mapayapa. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads for the blessing. May God, who by the resurrection of His Son, was pleased to, to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, Give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. May he by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. Amen. And may you who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith by living a right manner on this earth be united with him in homeland of heaven. Amen. And may the blessing of the Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen.
our mass ascended, we go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. Now we do the blessing for the sick. God, Almighty Father, by your blessing, you give us strength and support in our frailty. Turn with kindness toward our sick brothers and sisters. Free them from all illness and restore them to good health. Through the intercession of Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag, so that in the sure knowledge of your goodness, they will gratefully bless your holy name, we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now, please bring out your religious articles for the blessing. In memory of the mysteries of the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, to the honor and glory of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag, may these rosaries, candles, images, and all other religious articles be blessed and made holy in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.